And he, this one that uh, is called the false prophet, uh, he causes all the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one should be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For the number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Now, there are certain technological marvels that had to be invented by man before this could be fulfilled. Remember, this was predicted 2,000 years ago. But yet, it says that the uh, Roman Antichrist and his Jewish counterpart that we call a false prophet are going to have the ability to require every person on earth to receive a mark with a number. Now, this number, 666, is the number of the name of the Roman Antichrist and to prove that they have uh, sworn allegiance to him, they're going to have to receive that number as the prefix to their personal number, which all will have, identity number. And unless you have that prefix number of the Antichrist added to your number, you're not authorized to buy or sell or hold a job. Now just think of the technology that was required for them to be able to do this on a world scale. And we're not talking about uh, being able to require a country or something like that. We're talking on a personal level of every person on the face of this earth being able to buy or sell. And these two personalities will be able to restrict that down to the personal level of each individual because of receiving that number. A whole lot thought, because I'll be back and show you how that's being set up right now. Hal Lindsey's Look Back at 2012 in the Light of Bible Prophecy is now available on DVD or audio CD. The Prophetic Year in Review 2012 audio CD can be yours for a gift of $10 plus shipping and handling. You can receive the DVD for a gift of $20 plus shipping and handling. To order your DVD or CD of Hal Lindsey's Prophetic Year in Review 2012, call toll-free 1-888-RAPTURE. You can also visit HalLindsey.com or write to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma 74147. Order your copy today. As I was saying in the last segment, in order for the Antichrist and the false prophet to be able to control whether every individual on earth could buy or sell, look at the technology that had to take place. First of all, there had to be the invention of electricity. The light bulb was an important advance. Then radio, then television, then going from a vacuum tube, which made building a computer that could do the computing necessary impossible would be too big uh, to go from a vacuum tube to a transistor. Then there had to be the progression in world communication. There had to be the uh, ability to invent and put into the space satellites and then to miniaturize all electronic fa facilities that would implement that. The invention of computers, of course, and the invention of microchips that can now be put under the skin that can carry a whole, a small, very small chip can carry your whole personal dossier and be picked up by satellites and transferred to one central place. All of that technology had to take place before the Antichrist and this one known as the false prophet would be able to implement the total control of the world and every individual in its population. Now, 
we've seen all of this take place. As a matter of fact, it's been an exponential increase in technology in the last 20 years. So that now being able to technically do this is possible. But politically, there was still a lag. The biggest problem of bringing about a one world government was getting the United States and its citizens to reject the Constitution that has given us the freedoms we have, to subject themselves to a uh, international small group of elite world governors and to forsake their national sovereignty and their national protections under the Constitution and submit to world governance. Now that, as I showed last week, is rapidly taking place. As a matter of fact, I believe that we're watching the setup of this for the Antichrist to appear. Now what should we expect, expect for this to happen? First of all, uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul gives a prophecy that gives us an idea of what has to take place immediately before this Antichrist can be introduced. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in the New International Version, For this secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Now the one holding back the mystery of world lawlessness is the Holy Spirit of God. He is the restrainer. And because every believer in Jesus Christ is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, to remove him and his restraint from the world involves removing all of those in whom he dwells, and that is every true believer in Jesus Christ. So the first thing that has to suddenly take place is for the true believers in Christ to suddenly and mysteriously be removed. That event has been called the rapture. I believe we're on the verge of that. But the minute that takes place, where divine restraint of lawlessness and evil is removed, immediately the Antichrist will be revealed. And this is what it says in verse 8 about that. And then the lawless one will be revealed. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. Now look, he is going to have all of the powers of Satan, and he is going to be able to work miracles and wonders in the power of Satan. And this is going to get, along with the fact that he's miraculously raised from a fatal wound, is going to be overwhelming for the world. They're going to see him as the Messiah, the one that's going to lead them into peace and security. Now, it goes on and says, in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing, they're perishing because they refuse to love the truth and to be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. The lie is basically gathered around the Antichrist who is going to present himself as God, and people are going to receive him that. And they say, he's the Messiah, he's God. But it'll be the false God. And why do people believe that? because they've rejected the one source that can show them where the truth and the false is. And that's the Bible. And because they have not loved the truth that Jesus Christ died in their place to bring them a pardon from every sin they'll commit. Because they've rejected that, God is going to send a strong delusion to them to explain away where all of these people who were true believers have disappeared and to accept all of the great deception that the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to bring to them.
the two great personalities are going to dominate the last stages of world history as we know it before Jesus Christ returns and puts them down and sets up a new world over which he will govern. It will be new management, believe me. But uh, I believe that it's very important to realize there's so much I could cover if I had the time, but it's important to realize this, that these two personalities, the Roman Antichrist is a political figure who's also religious. The false prophet is a religious figure who's also political. They work hand in hand together. They are going to use all of the things that are being set up right now and probably ignorantly being set up uh, they're going to use all of the centralization of power, all of the centralization of, of uh, economics, and the centralization in uh, a common one-world uh, currency, a common one-world uh, electronic money, if you please, to be able to gather things into power so that when this man comes with his electrifying abilities, his... Uh, tremendous power given him by Satan, the world be ready for him. And the false prophet will cause both the Israelites and the Gentiles to worship this man as God. But it will lead to the disintegration of the world as we know it. It will lead to a time when there will be a rebellion among the nations and Armageddon will start. A war so great that only the personal return of Jesus Christ will be able to stop it. I believe we're right at that time. All of the uh, birth pangs Jesus said to watch as signs indicating his return would increase in frequency and intensity. Religious deception, uh, famine, earthquakes, global weather pattern changes, uh, the uh, tremendous rise of conflict between nations. All of them are before us now. So I believe the most important thing for you to do is settle where you stand with God right now. Jesus has died for every sin you ever, ever commit. You just have to acknowledge that you're a sinner and receive the gift of pardon that he offers you. Do that right now. Time is running out. Thank you so much for standing with me as a watchman on the wall. I thank God for sending me such loyal partners, and I pray daily that He will reward your faithfulness and protect and prosper you in these very difficult times. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Well, we'll keep our eyes on all of the things that are happening in this area. And God willing, I'll see you next week. You've been watching the Hal Lindsey Report. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Hal Lindsey Media Ministries, P.O. Box 470-470, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74147. You can also support this ministry online. Visit HalLindsay.com or call 1-888-RAPTURE.